Good afternoon and welcome back to our second installment of Updating Your Boat's Electrical System brought to you by Boating Direct Marine Services. I'm Tom Doyle and in our previous blog we reviewed the steps required to install a marine galvanic isolator. All of this was in preparation for installing a Xantrax Freedom Series inverter charger on the boat. In our previous blog we installed the galvanic isolator and replaced the main power line from the shore plug of Celtic Sea to the AC panel electrical center of the boat. Prior to moving on to the installation of the inverter charger, a couple points we'd like to bring out. Please note that all the wires have been bundled and affixed to solid locations along both bulkheads to ensure minimal movement while the vessel is underway. Also, as we move to the uh, AC master panel, Please note that the new service wire coming into the vessel has been marked indicating its function and equipment associated with it, in this case a galvanic isolator. But due to the time limitations of blogging, we've gone ahead and installed our Freedom Inverter Charger and during this episode we'll review the installation requirements for grounding the system and installing the alternating current side of the inverter charger unit. For the purposes of this installation, we chose a disused locker, which is directly below our battery compartment, yet isolated from it. Ventilation is adequate, and there's plenty of room for both the inverter charger to sit on a sturdy shelf, which we fabricated, and also allow us access to any other components required of other boat systems. In this case, a service nut for a through-hull fitting. The requirements for electrical ground and grounding of electrical components on a boat are not always clear. However, the current standard requires that both AC and DC systems share a common grounding point and also, there is a requirement of the Xantex Freedom Inverter Charger that it is also grounded. To accomplish this, we reviewed the status of our old alternating current system and found that it had not been properly grounded. To rectify this situation, we've run a green grounding wire from the AC bus of the electrical panel down to the Inverter Freedom Charger system. On the inverter charger unit is a common grounding lug where we've run the ground for both the AC panel and the unit. This wire is then run back to our engine. The grounding wire was uh, routed from the inverter charger compartment through a bilge area and followed steering cables up to the engine. It has been affixed to common AC and DC grounding point on our engine and we now have a grounding system in compliance with current U.S. Coast Guard and American Yacht and Boating Association standards. Also note, anytime you affix wiring to a marine diesel engine, these engines move when underway. So please allow adequate slack that will allow the cabling to move with the engine and not be damaged or torn away from the grounding point while the vessel is moving. Prior to working on any alternating current circuits on a boat, please ensure that you've disconnected your shore power cable and that the system has no voltage being supplied to it. In this case we did that prior to starting the blog, so we're ready to go. The new shore power cable is gone into the 
AC circuit, main AC circuit breaker and affixed to the relevant terminals at this point. In the previous installation, the onside of the breaker was then wired direct to the neutral ground and hut buses of the AC panel. With the installation of the Freedom inverter charger, we disconnected this wiring circuit from the neutral ground and hut buses and installed a new wire which provides power to the Freedom inverter charger. Please note we've labeled this Freedom AC input. This AC wire has been routed down from the main circuit breaker into the Xantrax unit and is wired to the AC input side of the Xantrax unit. While we were here, we also ran a new AC output line coming out of this branch and returning to the main circuit breaker. So the AC output branch from the Freedom Inverter Charger has been rerouted back up to the main AC panel. At this point we have wired this cable to the neutral ground and hut buses of the AC system. By doing this, when the main circuit breaker for the AC panel is turned on, power is routed to the Freedom Inverter Charger and then back up to the main AC bus. When we complete our final installation of the inverter charger unit, all power functions will be managed and monitored by Xantrex's Link 2000 battery monitoring system. In our next blog, we'll talk about the DC wiring or direct current wiring requirements for this unit and review the benefits boaters get from installing such a system. Thanks for your time. We look forward to seeing you again in our next episode of the Boating Direct Marine Blog. The projects featured are available through our online store, www.boatingdirect.net.